It's not sexy enough. And honestly, the music is never sexy enough. Uh, for Beltane, welcome in, everybody. Well, hopefully you're in the right place. We're in the right place. Uh, one of my favorite holidays of the year is Beltane. Won't be too much of a surprise when I tell you if you don't know already. Um, so I'm going to teach you a little bit about the history of this very important holiday. And it's sexy enough. <laughs> and we're going to decorate our sacred space behind me and make it beautiful for Beltane. It already looks correct. You know, we've got some really beautiful fabrics here to play with. We're going to be uh, making sure that we follow altar basics. Anybody new tonight to Sage Goddess or to these altar decorating parties? We have some surprises for you. Um, I'm blending an incense with you too that I'll be telling you about um, and that you'll be able to purchase as we uh, get ready for this. It'll be a perfect incense for your Beltane altar. And then I have a little personal enter to win tonight. So only those of you who are here, marketing doesn't even know. This is when I think it goes rogue and I do shit that nobody else knows about. Um, this is a perfectly double terminated raspberry spinel worth several hundred dollars for manifestation this is one of the oldest stones on the planet it's tanzanian spinel and this is for making all your dreams come true because that's what the energy of beltane is all about so this would be by the way you should wear this like you should take that and have it capped in gold if you win it it's if this was cut and faceted it'd be worth so much money it's just i love these rare crystals in their natural form and i thought you would too so if you're trying to manifest something new i've got something so what you have to put in your notes is spinel, S-P-I-N-E-L. It's spelled like it sounds. If you say spinel or spinol, we will still count you. It's okay if you miss a bell and the, it, we'll get the idea, right? You can even put manifest or manifestation. Um, and then one of you who shops before midnight at sagegoddess.com, your code is Gaia for 24% off. So you have to shop tonight before midnight. Actually, let's do it tomorrow because some people might not catch this till tomorrow. Okay, so you have till Wednesday at midnight. Um, if you put the word spinel in your notes, you'll be entering to win my spinel for you, for your Beltane altar. Okay, and then Team SG, I just need to be able to see the chat. We've got some streaming settings set up, so I want to be able to see everybody's comments. Where are you chiming in from tonight? Um, so a couple of things to tell you about Beltane. And I don't want to go on and on and on, but you know me, I can't not teach. So I want to start with what you need to know about this important holiday, why it's so important to me. And then what it means for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere. How many of you are below the equator that puts you in the Southern Hemisphere? And if you are in that area, when we are celebrating Beltane, you're going to be honoring and celebrating Samhain, which for us is the opposite side of the wheel of the year, right? So when we are celebrating, there's two portals, okay? Let me draw you a not great picture so that I can illustrate this for you. Okay. Are we good on the text side of things? Just because I want to be able to focus on the feed. Yeah, okay. So this is the calendar, okay? I don't do calendars as like linear things. I think of calendars as a wheel of the year, right? So when we are over here celebrating Beltane, May 1st, in the Southern Hemisphere, they're celebrating, celebrating Samhain, which is October 31st to November 1st, right? So these are opposite sides of what we call the wheel of the year. All the months are in between. Now, these are both what we call portal points. Points when the energy is more intense than it is at any other time of year. Um, you know this with Samhain because you know about ghosts and you know spirit guides coming back and ancestors coming through this portal we don't talk a lot about this being a portal though and it absolutely is beltane is the portal to life Samhain is the portal to death so when we're celebrating beltane it's high spring everything my garden is alive with fruit and flowers yours probably is too in the northern hemisphere while we're celebrating life in the southern hemisphere they're celebrating death when we celebrate Samhain, they're celebrating beltane so this is the duality and I love mentioning that to you, not only because we're a global organization and we have family and friends in our community from all parts of the world, but also because it's important for you to know you're going to be hearing your spirit guides more powerfully. You're going to be having probably some lucid dreams like you do at Samhain time. Your divination will be more powerful at Beltane. Um, but it's all in service to 
growth and creation and conception. I'll talk about that in a minute. And not about death and, and decay, which is what Samhain represents, the end of harvest, right? So the, the loss of the life of the season. So we're with you in the Southern Hem too as we talk about everything tonight. Beltane, let's talk about it. <laughs> okay, Belenus is the um, Celtic god of fire, of the sun. So Beltane is the um, celebration of that god in, in, in the Celtic tradition. Um, we think of it in other terms too. So in the pagan traditions, and I don't know if any of this is your tradition, but we celebrate it. Um, this is the night when the god and goddess conceive life, right? So it's a, it's a sex holiday. I have to say that to you now because if you've got little ones with you and you don't want to um, talk about sex, <laughs> this may not be, this and our Beltane ritual are the, the least sort of kid-friendly situations in the sense that we're talking about reproduction in a not um, clinical sense. So I just want to put that little disclaimer out there. We have to talk about sex tonight because the great rite is when the high priest has sex with the high priestess, right? And birth the god and goddess. And so all of that is what the entire pagan tradition is built on. And that's why I always say your homework on Beltane is to enjoy the sexier side of life. And that can be solo and that can be in partnership and whatever that looks like for you is what it's meant to be, okay? So this kicks off that season of growth. Spring equinox is when the goddess delivers her child, right? It's when Persephone returns to Demeter. And so that's kind of like the completion of the cycle. So Beltane, we're right in that kind of liminal space now between spring equinox and Beltane. But come Beltane, we are ready to start the cycle all over again and begin the cycle of creating life. Does that make sense? Christy likes it. Um, the funniest thing, because I've been doing this with you for so long, Sage Goddess is turning 13 in July, which is so crazy. Um, I have gotten so many messages over the years from your partners saying thank you for teaching about Beltane because it um, has turned up the heat a little bit in your homes on April 30th and May 1st. So um, I just want to say you're welcome. It's uh, one of many services I provide is to turn up the heat in your home. Okay, I know. Let's send it. So um, I want to talk about altar basics. Any questions about Beltane, by the way? Of course, I'll be teaching you so much more about this holiday. When I was a, um, a petite pagan, a pagan lit, a witch lit back in the, in the days, because my spiritual tra training began with pagan education. Um, so I always kind of honor that as a, a root tradition for me. It's not my current tradition, but it's something I'm well versed in. I remember my teacher at the time said, Beltane and Lamas completely get overlooked you know what I mean nobody really unless you know gets excited about Beltane and Lamas but those are such important moments in the wheel of the year and Beltane in particular because it honors the creation of life and it honors the feminine and her role its role in the creation of life gestation and delivery of life onto the planet and it honors the masculine which is the seed of life right so both sides <laughs> both sides okay so um, when we build an altar, and I'm so lucky to have all these tools at my fingertips, when we build an altar, we want to think about four things, which are the four car cardinal elements, earth, air, fire, and water. You can always incorporate spirit, and of course, spirit's always present. But a core practice when you're building an altar is to make sure that you have the four elements represented. So I'm always mindful of that. The one thing I did not get, Jared, if you wouldn't mind getting it for me, is some water to pour into the little vases for the flowers. I always forget that part. That part. Um, what's an altar? An altar is a sacred space that you set up that's dedicated to an occasion or a purpose. I build altars for everything. So in every room of my house, there's an altar. Here in my office, there's probably six or seven altars set up. So if, I, if something is important to me, I set up an altar for it. If there's a holiday, I set up an altar for it. If I'm trying to manifest something, I'll set up an altar for that. Certainly the holidays qualify. Um, the elements are important because there are four of them. They're considered the gateways. And when you anchor those elements on your altar, you're basically balancing the energies. And you like to have a nice balanced energy because it feels peaceful. So when people walk into your space and say, oh, your house always feels so peaceful or so, you know, I love the energy here, it feels so good. 
it's probably because consciously or subconsciously you've been figuring out the alchemy of how to balance those elements around you. So I'm going to talk specifically about the four elements tonight and make sure that they're represented in some way on the altar because that's important. Okay. Now, thank you, thank you. Um... So the first step, and I'm going to be um, checking in the comments to see if you have questions. So as we go, that's, it's perfectly fine to ask questions. I may not be able to get to all of them because you can see I'm more focusing on the camera, but um, I am here for all the questions and all the, um, uh, all the information you need. And if you're, if you're new to magical practice, there's never a, a wrong time to start. And I've been doing this work since I was 15 years old. I got my first job to buy my first magical book. Hold on. Um, and the rest is history. I was obsessed. I am obsessed with all things magic. Hold on. I've got to find a lighter that works. Just a second. I know. If we always laugh at SG. It's like all we do is burn things. <laughs> but finding a lighter that works is always a challenge. Um, okay. So I'm going to... I like to come through with just a little bit of sage to clear the energy. And you can do other things too. This is um, tobacco, not the way you think about it, but ceremonial tobacco. So sometimes you can blow the breath of tobacco over. Um, I like to do that when I'm burning lots of feminine herbs because tobacco is very masculine. So it brings in that energy. So just a couple of white sage leaves. Let the flame go out. A little for you. Maybe you could use a little clearing this time of day. Again, thank you for being here and um, and also, you know, for sharing what we do with people you love because videos like this are really designed to be educational, to give you an idea about how to build altars, why we do them, and specifically for a holiday like this, which has such potent energy. So we also want to take our, our sage or whatever we're clearing with and we want to move it through the space so that we are clearing the energy of all the tools that we're working with. So you want to bring it around and over where you're going to be standing. And a burner like this is nice. It almost works like a sensor. And then anyone who's in the space, like you, our team, from your feet to the top of your head. And we call this the, the cross, just moving from side to side. And by the way, that cross, clearing is Aztec. So it, it feels like a, um, sometimes people will say, is that a Christian practice? And it's like, it's actually an Aztec practice to clear with the cross. The cross represents the um, parallel worlds as above and so below, as within and so without. So, and then just making sure all of that is extinguished. That feels better already. Yeah. Well, I love it. And I, you know, the thing is, what I love about altar decorating and the reason we do these uh, experiences with you, altars are a way for you to create an energetic space and let it continue working when you're not there. So when we dedicate an altar to something like this, which is passion and desire, it's the desire for the goddess to be with the god and to create life, which is a fundamental human desire, right? Humans want to perpetuate life. Life always perpetuates itself. But this altar is all about that moment between the masculine and the feminine when they know they're about to create life and there's all that potency and then they release that life into the world. So it's all that kind of juicy, passionate sensuality. When we talk about sex, but sex is just one part of that. It's also about desire and it's about life and the life force and how powerful it is to want another human being and then to want to create life from the two of you into into being so it's celebrating all of those kind of basic primal drives that we have and we have those and the evidence of it is how many people are on the planet with us so this is universal to everybody right we 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 experience love and passion and then we want to create something out of it something that will last and endure beyond us and that's what Beltane is all about okay so stepping back i want to give you a high level overview of kind of what i have going on here you're gonna notice color. It's a universal theme. So in, at Beltane, what they do traditionally in Celtic traditions is they have what's called the maypole, which looks something like my rainbow wand here. 
The wooden pole represents the masculine. But do you get it? And then the ribbons that go around it <laughs> represent the feminine. But do you get it? It's, uh, I said before, I think it's really great to put earmuffs on your children, to put them in a different room with SpongeBob or something that isn't this, because I really don't want to teach that class tonight. I am authorized to teach that, but I don't want to teach that tonight. But if you have questions about why the pole represents the masculine and the ribbons represent the feminine, you should submit those to Karen. <laughs> she will have a lot of fun responding to you about that. Auntie Athena is not here for all of that tonight. But you have to know that, otherwise you're like, well, why is that there? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Carnelian, stone of the sun. Carnelian, Heliodor, yellow labradorite, golden aventurine, um, citrine. These are all stones of the sun. The sun is celebrated at Beltane because it's almost center sky. That's what will happen at the equinox, right? So we're, we're feeling the energy of the sun is super masculine, super powerful. I'm just kidding. Uh, Karen says she will return all of your messages to sender, which will <laughs> probably return them to me. But you know what? You're welcome, Karen. That was, um, thank you for being part of my stand-up routine tonight. There's no easy way to say it, kids, so what are you going to do? Okay. Now, something alive on your altar is important. Why is that? Because things that are alive thrive in water, and water is the element of life. It's the element of prosperity and abundance, and it's the element of the mother. You just ate it in a bag of water, if you're human, and so it kind of unites all of us. Also, fresh living things on your altar represent the life force, which is important for magical work. Candle holders um, are here. I like height. So when I build an altar, I've told you this before, I think of height from an interior design perspective. If you build your altar on a flat surface and everything is the same height, there's no interest. So you wanna think in uh, odd and even numbers. For candles, I like even numbers. Two candles, four candles, six candles to create balance. When it comes to stones and decoration, statues, I like to think in threes, triads, which create a different kind of balance, usually center, front center of the altar. So we're gonna think in pairs and quads in the back of the altar. Look at the two slices of agate here in the heart shape. You've got two candle holders here that we'll place on either side. And then you wanna think in um, triads when it comes to centerpieces for your altar, just from a design perspective. And then the reason I have the raised surface here is you wanna think of height too. So these kind of shelves lift what's at your, at, you know, sort of middle vision for you and give it a little bit of height, which creates more interest and more drama. Yes, the rule of three, but also the rule of duos and quads when it comes to um, what's gonna create height around the edges of your space. So, how do you create your own maypole? Well, we do have it in your Beltane kit. You're gonna be making this kind of a maypole. Remember that? In the Beltane tools, where there's a fun enter to win if you get those tools today. Karen has details on that and I'll show you two at the end. So we're gonna create this together, which is kind of a centerpiece. And you can place that wherever that feels right. And then I'm putting a double terminal wand, which is the new brand new wand from today, right in front of that. The reason we want double terminated pieces in front of the altar is we want to create a flow of energy through the space and double terminated wands send and receive energy. They create sort of a loop, a horizontal loop of energy. Generators create a vertical loop of energy wands create a horizontal loop of energy. So I'm going to have both on my altar so that energy is flowing north and south and energy is also flowing east and west. Okay, so I've got my, if you have a single piece that's going to end up being center altar because you only have one. Again, same with this. It's going to end up being center altar because you only have one of them. If you have triplicates, that can be a different kind of centerpiece. Over here I have a little bit of a triplicate situation. This team SG, I could not figure out how to get the flower on the stand so it wasn't fucked up. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. I love the little flower and it comes with a stand, but every time I put it on the stand, it falls off and I don't wanna be responsible for broken flowers. So I'm gonna set that over there for a second. Okay, um, now I'm gonna show you everything else that's off to the side of my altar because I'm gonna kind of pick and choose things. I'm gonna adjust the blinds because we're going through a sunset here at SG. 
I'm going to pick and choose things, but it's going to be intuitive, and I want to show you what I'm kind of picking and choosing from. We have stones over here that represent fire. We have flowers in vases that represent water. We have um, candles to represent fire. And then we have to have something that represents air. The easiest tool to represent air on your altar is always a feather. And one of the things I love about feathers, Beltane is a sensual holiday, meaning it's about your basic senses, right? Your sense of smell. It should smell beautiful. Your sense of touch, it should feel beautiful, right? Um, your sense of sight, it should be visually exciting and turn you on to look at it and inspire you to look at it, right? So all of your, you, it, and, and then your sense of hearing. So like when you're at your altar, play have spe specific music. I'm gonna build a Beltane playlist in SoundCloud that you can play, but whatever you love that kind of gets you in the mood. My Sensual Life playlist on SoundCloud right now is, I think it's 18 hours, 12 to 18 hours. So I play it overnight, just kind of quietly in the background is white noise. Um, so if you are following my SoundCloud, and Karen will link you to it. It's free to follow my playlist. So Sensual Life is a good one. I have a, another playlist called Fave Ambient, which is just really good sleeping music or meditation music. You can turn it on, like I said, when you're falling asleep and let it kind of run all night. It'll just kind of, if you're a sound person, music person when you sleep, these are also really good playlists for um, Beltane as well. There's a couple of others too. Return of the King is really good. Um, I don't know how many playlists I've done at this point. So you can have fun going through SoundCloud and um, playing all those playlists. I spent a lot of time curating those playlists and some of the musicians are people I've come to know and love during my um, Sage Goddess experience. So they're really amazing people who record in the right frequencies so the energy is right and bring the right energy to your space. Okay, so feathers. So I'm gonna put my smudge fan over here just to represent that energy. If you have a single feather, that's okay too. Some of you have found feathers that you collect and you keep. I love peacock feathers. So if you have a peacock feather, that would look beautiful over this too because all the colors, the blues and the greens would be perfect for this. So whatever works for you works for me too. I guess if I have a peacock feather in here, but I don't think I do. I shall have to remedy that at some point. But anyway, I don't need one right now. I think this is good for right now. What I might do, wait, this golden feather in here was one of our kit tools. Let me remember this. I love this feather. Um, it came with our tools. So I think what I'm going to do instead of the whole fan is incorporate the single feather into what I've got going on. I think that will get figured out at the end. It doesn't feel like it's time for that yet, but a, a single feather would be really, really beautiful. Okay. I'm looking into the feed to see if there's any questions and I'll keep checking in. Yeah, just a single feather feels really nice for that rather than kind of going overboard. Mm. More on SoundCloud. There's also a playlist, I have to tell you the name of it, um, that I made called, and it's, you can search Sage Goddess SoundCloud and you'll find my account. Um, it is called, Oh, sirens, oh, I have to turn siren songs public. Let me turn, I'll turn that public life for you later. Um, Procession is a great playlist. It's all Egyptian music, like temple music from ancient Egypt, recreations of those songs. So Procession is another one. It's all ambient, but it's all Egyptian. If you love kind of an Egyptian vibe while you're decorating, that would be really cool too. There's a whole um, Isis and Osiris vibe here, Shiva Shakti kind of energy that would resonate well with that, that playlist. Now, um, I'm going to pour some water into my vase, and then I want you to think, so we've honored um, the element of air, which is direction of east, with our single feather. We've honored the element of earth with our stones. I'm honoring the element of water with fresh water. We have a lot of perfumes. Um, the one we pulled out in particular, but Team SG can also link you to some fun Beltane sex oriented perfumes because we've made so many of them over the years um but our may month of magic kit is super beautiful i don't know if that's available yet but um the the perfume the mist from that kit would be perfect as well um, oh flame of desire perfume let's see if 
clarify the notes for that for you would be another one. And it's kind of nice to anoint with a beltane oriented perfume when you're decorating. So you get into the vibe, into the mood a little bit. Ah, you're welcome, by the way, for the playlists. They, they are magic. And they will take you on a journey all their own that I can't quite explain to you. But they are, there's a lot of magic behind those playlists, so enjoy. So I'm gonna light my sacred candle. Now again, I wanna show you, when you have your tools, um, you might be like, why do people sometimes order two of a candle? It's a great question. But the reason is they, they know these balance principles. And so when you have two of a candle, it allows you to put one on either side of your altar. So the Kundalini candles, I do love the label, but I'm gonna take it off in this case. Um, you can just take it off gently and you can always frame the art or put it on your altar. I don't like to tear it. Let's see. But the Kundalini candle is important because it's wrapped with Sacra, which is our sex perfume. I'm doing this as gently as I can. There we go. It allows you to put a candle on either side of your altar. Okay. So, and what I like to do because I have cats and also because shit happens and knocking over your candles is not what you want to do and make a huge mess, um, is I always anchor my candles to my candle holder. So at the bottom of your Sage Goddess beeswax candles, you're always going to see a wick. So what you do is you light that wick. burn baby and then drip the wax and the wax becomes a form of adhesive so that you can stick it and remember the wax is going to drip down anyway don't be one of those people who doesn't want to burn their candles because the wax drips because if you put this in the freezer all the wax will pop off and it's perfectly clean so there's that one on that side. Same story. Isn't that fun? Yeah, and you can find candle stands like this. I think these these are my old ones from home. I think these are from Home Goods. Like, we don't sell a lot of big, tall wooden candlestick holders because you can find them online. I mean, even Amazon has stuff like that now. So um, you can just search online tall wood candle holders and find some fun options. And then we, of course, dress them up with sari ribbons and other things. I'm trying to be careful with my label. The art is always so beautiful on our candles that I just can't bear losing it. Hold on. This reminds me also of like when you were little. Did you ever have like um, those ice cream cones where you had to pull the paper off of the <laughs> off of the cone before you ate it? <laughs> I don't think they have those anymore, but it reminds me of being a kid and doing that. Okay, so again, we're dripping, 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 and you know it's nice to be mindful and use this time to set your intention for your altar. So, my intention for this altar is to feel passionate and alive and courageous and strong and beautiful and sexy and all the things when I look at it, that it reminds me of my own divine feminine power and masculine power of creation. If you did it right, by the way, you should be able to pick up the holder without dropping the candle. Is it straight? Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. And that goes over here. Pretty. So now we have some height we've created some elevation that um, gives us tiered stages to decorate so we've decorated kind of the top we've decorated the middle with the the uh, maple wand and then we've decorated a little bit here at the bottom something for air something for fire which carnelian represents fire too so carnelian does both you know double duty it's the element of earth because it's a stone but it's the element of fire too because it's a fire stone as well okay so lots of um, ideas for using your sari ribbons, your, um, your jewelry from your candles that we've made for you from your lariats. Okay, element of water now. We want to bring what's alive into the space. Um, I always start with what's green. I'm 
just looking for search. Oh, right in front of me, let's see, okay. So something just kind of evergreen to create visual interest. And um, my rule is, and I learned this from a florist, always cut at an angle when you're cutting or trimming greenery and get it into the vase you want to put it in within 15 seconds. I don't know fully the science behind that, but I've noticed that when I'm trimming plants, they stay alive longer if I do that. You always want to put what's basic and green in the space first and then use color as accent. So we have a lot of really beautiful options here. I love freesia. This is purple freesia. Purple is my favorite color. Um, freesia smells incredible. It smells like a perfume, the most intoxicating perfume you can imagine. And I like to use, in a Beltane decoration, I like to use the flowers, but also the buds, because I think of the buds as representing conception, right? It's the flower that has yet to be created. So what I do is I put my bouquet together in my hand the way I want it to look in my vase. There's a little bit of fullness, but like it's skinny on the bottom, so it'll fit into the vase. Again, trimming at an angle. And then in the in the vase within 15 seconds so that the flowers survive. Now I'm doing one type of flower and one type of greenery per per vase. Isn't that pretty? So you have the buds and you also have the full flowers. And then there were a few, um, there's a peony in here that I don't want to miss. Have you worked with peony before? Peony is for, peony is for innocence. Oh. I know. Or how to, <laughs> the Scorpio in the room goes, how to lose it? Um, yes. Here's the thing, like no matter how old you are, there should be an element of innocence to you and how you look at the world and how you look at life and how you look at love and like, I don't know, we, in Buddhism we call it the beginner's mind, right? Do you really know everything and do you want to know everything? Like don't you want things to be mysterious? I'm very into mystery in life. And mystery is part innocence. What happens when we get older and we stop, stop believing? What happens? Life loses a little bit of its... Um, it's luster. So the secret to getting your magic back, this is why places like Disneyland exist, is because, you know what, let's be innocent a little bit. Let's pretend like we don't know everything. Because the reality is, kids, you don't know everything. Let me reassure you, this universe is beyond your reckoning. If you knew all the secrets, it would be hard to be human anymore. That's why they don't tell all the secrets. But. Let things be a mystery and let yourself be a mystery too. Nobody needs to know everything about you. There should always be things that are off limits. The reality is too, you don't know yourself fully. If you think you do, you don't. So let it all kind of unfold. That's part of the sexiness of life to me. The peonies are just starting where you are, Circe. What colors do you get when you're growing them? I'm so curious. I, I've never seen them growing wild. I've only seen them cut and sold at the flower mart or Sometimes Trader Joe's, when you're really lucky, they'll have like a peony season, but, and play. I mean, it says Tanya, who's like one of our resident artists in our community, like play, let things emerge from you. Instead of sitting down and saying, I don't know how to paint, sit in front of a canvas and see what comes out of your hands. You know, it's like, how do you know you're not? And maybe you weren't when you were little, but maybe you're an artist now. I think just a little bit of that experimentation is magic. All right, so element of water flowers um on your altar i just want to say this this is my personal uh philosophy don't let your flowers die and, and the water get weird and stuff like don't do that this whatever is here you need to commit to tending it when you put things on your altar they they become sacred and we're going to dedicate this altar tonight to our practice right but if you if you don't change the water if you don't take care of the plants and flowers if you just kind of let things go weird on your altar they kind of go weird in the energy field too so I just want to say like 
take care of the things that you put here and treat them with care. If you don't water your plants at home, it's kind of the same principle. And then you go, why do I have these blocks around prosperity? And it's because you've got forms of life that aren't getting um, the nutrients they need. So you want to make sure you're attending all of that. Okay. Element of water, element of fire, element of earth, element of air, all four elements balanced. We've done a beautiful job. It's come together in a lovely way, I think. Um, everything else from here becomes a choice point, right? What do you need? I'm taking the bigger pieces out to see if there's truly anything missing. Um, I'm going to put the Beltane tools from our kit here, which is our knocked up perfume <laughs> and our knocked up candle. Uh, once again, I'm responsible for that name because we were talking about like more appropriate names. But actually, that's what happens at Beltane is the high priestess becomes pregnant by the high priest. And there's no way to sugarcoat that. But it's more fun to say she gets knocked up. And if you don't like that, you can submit your complaints to me. I'm, I don't really want to hear them, though, because you all know it's funny. And if someone says, what perfume are you wearing? It's so sexy. And you say, knocked up. <laughs> doesn't leave much to the imagination. But that's what Beltane is. Beltane doesn't leave much to the imagination. Feather for air. Other options for air. An incense burner. Because you're going to burn stuff and it's going to smoke. And that's air. So that's another option for air. But feather is my favorite tool to represent the element of air. So I'm like, I don't make the rules here, kids. Okay. And then making an incense bun for you tonight that would be perfect. The last thing I wanted to show you that I did on the altar, there's two things actually. Um, I don't know if you remember this because it's been a minute since we talked about it, but we made sterling silver snake pins with emerald eyes that go into your beeswax candles. And I think it's one of the sexiest things we ever made. My Kundalini candle at home has this pushed into it. So all you do is push it into the wax. So I'm gonna show you how this works. I don't know if we have these left and I don't know how many of these we have left, but if you missed it when we had it, how sexy is that for your Beltane altar? Snakes represent what we call, and it's really satisfying to push it in by the way. And then as it burns, you can lower it and then pull it out and put it on another candle. Snakes represent kundalini energy. Kundalini energy is the energy of desire and it's the energy of creation. It sits at your root chakra, comes up through the sacral chakra. If you ever had a kundalini awakening. Um, I'm actually gonna turn this though. I'm gonna put the pen on the back side of the, of the margin. That allows you to kind of see me pushing it in. So if you don't have that, it's candle decor. I know. And that is really sexy. And if you're any of the signs that are associated with snake, like Scorpio, loves a snake, Scorpio moon. So we always wanted a pet snake. It didn't happen. Uh, but anyway, that will probably resonate with you. So Karen, can, if we have those, Karen will link to it. If we don't, that's okay. Um, we also have this really cute, I don't know if you saw this, but we have these, I think, in stock. I think this is so cute this little snake incense burner with like the little ruby red jewel there and it's got the little hole and you stick the card thing in the hole and you can burn your stick incense in there so I'm gonna put that over here too that's element of air and then Orange calcite, you know, is a stone that we associate with um, the measure of hardness scale. <laughs> it's for erectile dysfunction. So that's just a good one to have if you want to guarantee a really good, great right. So I'm trying to be appropriate right now, and it's really hard because we're talking about things that are not appropriate. So um, I, I do need to behave myself. So I'm going to put orange calcite over here and then the last thing um oh and we have a little snake incense spoon too it's really cute so that we're gonna make incense together now um so that would be another good thing to have for your collection okay um shiva lingam if you want to know what styles to be incorporating shiva lingam represents um integration of the masculine and the feminine sex and desire so that's a good sound to put in your altar um we need a little balance on the side too so i think i'm going to put the the 
flour. There's one that's on the stand and better than I think it does. Isn't that cute? It's coming together. <laughs> so that's so far as where we are with everything. I did put, um, this is a tantric twin crystal, meaning it's got a point growing alongside the point so it's a twin it's a twin here with with a sort of a i guess it's more of a child so i thought this was a cool point to represent the union of the masculine and feminine and the creation of life and then i have two um tools to represent the masculine and the feminine so i have a little goddess statue here to represent the feminine and then i have the the lion the sun king to represent the masculine orange calcite sphere would be great Those two will go there. Um, statues of Shiva and Shakti would be really good. Um, um, any of the Isis and Osiris art that we've given you, or any statues you have of Isis and Osiris would be really good too. So anything God goddess to represent the union would be would work really well. Okay. Again, your code is Gaia for twenty four percent off today at sagegoddess.com. So if any of these things you're like, I want a little incense spoon or whatever, you can shop the website and then if you put spinel in your notes one of you is going to win the most beautiful double term naturally octahedral raspberry spinel from my collection and that's for manifestation of whatever you desire so that would be perfect on your altar all right i'm about to get dirty over here y'all and i'm really excited about it we're going to make incense um so this particular blend of incense let me give you the details um, it's called embrace desire desire is the most important word in the English language because what you desire is ultimately what you get and we have to be really careful when we're doing manifestation work at these major portal holidays Beltane and Samhain that we're focusing on what we want and not what we don't want because you're going to create what you focus on so desire is what you want so if you'd say, I desire this, I desire that. I, I desire more of this, less of that. I want more fun, but less stress. I want more, I don't know, whatever it is, passion and less obligation. That, that is ultimately what this blend is about, so that you focus on what you want to create and then you burn this incense that I'm making for you now at this kind of portal way. I do these once in a while, not very often. And the last time we blended incense was like months ago. So um, if you want a bottle of this, Team SG will tell you. I actually don't know how to get it, but they're going to tell you yeah, it's, how to get it. Yeah, it's available now. It's available now, and we're going to blend it. Who I'm blending it now, and then we're going to bottle it, and then you're going to get it. And when you burn it on your altar, it is um, associated with the air element, so that's another way of honoring air. Um, are we putting mako in it this time? Yeah. yeah okay, we are. Would, would you mind grabbing the um, jar just to bring it over? It'll be, make it a little bit easier to put down some space right here. So I'm going to go one by one through the ingredients with you. Uh, Charlotte wants more connections and passion. This is the time to really be thinking about that. There's never a bad time to focus on what you want because the universe is always co-creating with you. The new moon and the full moon and these high holidays are obvious sort of power days and power points when the energy is higher, the frequency is um, different, right? The moon is in a different phase, more aligned to creation and manifestation. But just because we're not in a new moon or full moon phase right now doesn't mean you're not still co-creating with the universe. And that's the secret to magic. Every day you have to really spend time in the vibration that you want to create and write it down. I'll tell you, I was thinking about this and I was telling my uh, girlfriend a couple of days ago about this. She was like, what's the commonality? Because I've manifested a lot. <laughs> it's okay. Um, she's like, what's the common theme across all the things you've manifested all these years? Is there something that you've done every single time, whether it's in business or in personal relationships or whatever it is, what's the one thing you've always done to manifest? And I thought about it for a minute and I said, you know, the one common theme for me across all of them is I wrote it down. I wrote it down. The times when I haven't manifested, there's no written record of this thing that I wanted to create. And sometimes it was because I hesitated to put it in writing. It always has felt so formal when I write something down, like I desire X or I desire Y. But when you do it, 
Now, it's more powerful to do it at Beltane or a new moon or a full moon, but when you do it any time and you write down, this is what I want, I am, I have, I enjoy, you're speaking and writing those things into existence. That's where the word spell comes from in magic, right? It comes from the idea that you spell out, literally spell it out in letters, because your handwriting is has its own vibration and frequency that nobody else on the planet has. So it's your unique signature. It's your energetic frequency that gets put into your handwriting. So I really do recommend having a journal where you write it down. That allows you to track what you're manifesting too, because if you're like, I don't think I'm manifesting, you'd be surprised at all the things you've written down that have come to pass. You just forgot it. Probably. Okay. Let's blend. You like my industrial bowl? I could fit myself in here. <laughs> I'm not going to do that for you today, but I could. Um, so I want to go through all of the ingredients with you one by one and talk to you about the energetic properties of them. And then you get to put your own in, uh, energy into this incense blend, which is kind of cool too. So you're part of the process of making this, not just a recipient of it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let me, yeah, let's start with benzoin, which is this one, yeah. So this is what benzoin looks like. Um, benzoin is really, really interesting because it um, binds energy and it heals and seals is my mantra for benzoin. It's actually something you can use in its liquid form as like a liquid band-aid. Um, but it is, the, it is the keeper of energy. So benzoin is a fixative. It helps the scent remain longer in whatever you blend. It's as old as time and dirt. And it smells like amber. It has a very like buttery, caramely, ambery texture to it. You're just gonna see my hands turn all kinds of colors, but I like to wear all my rings when I'm blending for you, so the energy is there. Okay, and then white copal, which is a cleanser. It's a restorer of energy. So the Aztecs use copal to clear spaces, and it really does. It's like white sage, but um, slightly more protective than clearing. White sage is more clearing, copal is more protective, um, but it sort of burns through the energy that you're resisting or that's resistant to you so that you can make pathways for healing and magic. Myrtle. It goes up my nose when we do this, it's yummy. Okay, this is myrtle. This is green myrtle, by the way. It looks like matcha powder. Um, but myrtle is actually for money. It really does help you manifest abundance and prosperity, uh, especially green myrtle. A lot of my friends refer to it as money powder. Um, and I'm just going to sort of mix it let go. And I like to, when I'm blending my incense, these are just my little, having made incense for 100 years now, I like to um, mix it in a clockwise direction, which is gathering and inserting energy. When you go counterclockwise, that's feminine, which is good too. But right now, in this stage, we want to create a masculine sort of pool of energy. And I always try to keep my center clear. And again, sending my energy to the intention that this blend will bring you clarity about what you seek, what you desire. Alright, lemon balm. Also prosperity, but prosperity of health. I always think of Beltane as being a holiday that is all about the vitality of the maiden phase of life. And so um, lemon balm is all about celebrating youthfulness, youthfulness of mind, body, and spirit. Um, it's calming too, it helps with sleep. I grow it in my garden, it's super easy to grow in almost any um, zone. And it makes a really beautiful tea too. The smell in this incense is lovely. <coughs> I'm just keeping my center clear, constantly sending my intention to the blend. Okay. Next up is Dragon's Blood. Super protective, important for all high holidays. What I love about the next two ingredients is I'm now making the bale fire. So for Beltane, we wanna honor the element of fire and what fire does. So dragon's blood represents fire's ability to purify, um, to destroy, to kill, um, to burn down to constituent elements. It's very important for us in alchemy, those of us who identify as alchemists or those of us with Egyptian lineage or those of us who are Atlantean all think about alchemy uh, because that was how science was formed in those early civilizations which is the transformation of substances from one form to another 
usually by the element of fire and heat. So as an alchemist, I love the energy of that. And then I want, actually want to add the, um, the red sandalwood next. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to finish the fire and then I'm going to add the other um, ingredients afterwards. So red sandalwood is about centering your energy field, focusing your vision, grounding and stabilizing you as you create what you see. And you can see the fire element energy. Were you able to smell it up your nose? <laughs> yeah, this incense, yeah, I was gonna say, those of you in the room, like you're fucked. This is like, it's gonna be up your nose for the rest of the night. Um, um, this incense is for sale. It's called The Essence of Desire. And I'm making it live with you, but you'll be able to purchase it if you want it. And then the cardamom and the ginseng. This is, Okay, cardamom, um, I put it in my coffee grounds. I blend it into my chai. Cardamom stimulates the sacral chakra like nothing else. And it's, it's just pure sexual desire. So I'm gonna do one circle of cardamom here in the middle These of my little sun. These cardamom were all like hold by hand for them too. Like this one's like one by one. Honestly, like if you if you were here and you're like, nah, this doesn't turn me on, I'd be like, that's okay, but we can't be friends. I'm kidding but kind of not <laughs> kidding at the same time i'm like what is even happening here right now okay um this is ginseng so i'm going to put ginseng as my center sun kind of the center of my fire ginseng does that ginseng is for um um focus it directs energy so if you if you're doing healing work and you send it um out into the universe by burning a little ginseng you it's said that your energy will um, find its way to the correct location with ease so, and again, like when I'm making incense, I love to just send, this is my ascending hand, so just sending the energy of my intention into the blend. This process, when you're making incense, is as important as product. That's why I say, like, some people, when I do these custom ones, will buy two bottles, because y'all know I don't do this a second time. So, I almost want to, can you get a picture of that? Okay, yeah. And then, black coho, should we put that in there? Yeah. I don't think we did. Um, it's actually the perfect time because I'm just gonna do a thin layer over the center for the black cohosh for the energy. Black cohosh is super, where your cardamom and your ginseng are kind of high masculine, your black cohosh becomes high feminine. Um, it's very powerful for menopause, it alleviates the signs and symptoms of PMS, um, but it's also extremely protective as the rest of them are too. It stabilizes your emotions and brings in divine feminine strength and power. And then just kind of weaving that into the into the mix. And then I'm kind of feeling like I want to put the stone that you guys are entering to win tonight in there for a minute. I get a picture of this too. I don't have my phone. Sometimes I do things and I'm like, oh, I really love how that looks. Can I take it from my direction too? Sure. Um, this is... We'll post this for you too, because this would be a cool like screensaver for your phone. It's all like all the nested circles of manifestation. So we are manifesting energies of the sun and the moon. We are manifesting mental clarity and focus. We are manifesting the divine feminine. We're manifesting the divine masculine, and we're manifesting desire, creation, and power. Isn't that stunning? So, and you can use your crystals too to imprint the incense so at the four directions just taking that energy as spinel may all of those who work with this blend manifest everything they seek in perfect time and in full alignment with their desires and the highest good of all beings on this planet at this time amen aho and so it is
good incense blends have essential oils in them. Um, labdenum, which is um, something I've been working with this last, actually, I'm gonna hopefully you can see this, I'm pouring in clockwise. Labdenum was worn by Julius Caesar and no one else in Rome was allowed to wear it. And it's because he said that when you smelled it, you should know that you're smelling the Caesar and not any other man. And so it was banned for wearing in ancient Rome except for the Kaiser, the Julius Caesar. Um, vanilla, which is an aphrodisiac, I don't have to tell you that. Um, myrrh and patchouli. Myrrh is for um, the feminine, receiving, um, trusting the divine embrace, unconditional love, and patchouli is for wealth and abundance. So there's always different ways to do this. I like to start from the outside and pull my incense in to blend the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients together. And the nice thing is like my hands no matter what I do will smell like this for a week and I just love it I have to say of all the things I've done over all these years at SG I think making incense is my favorite but I have Egyptian lineage and priestess lineage and there is really something about um, temple memories of just blending all of these sacred herbs and resins that we've had access to for thousands of years into these sacred blends that we would burn in the morning to welcome the sun, in the evening to welcome the moon. And it's interesting, on the second pour, every pour is different when you're working with essential oils because they're vibrational. And the second pour is like total patchouli, grounding, stabilizing. Um, so anyway, if you want this blend, I'm not making as much of this one as I usually do. So it's at sagegoddess.com. It's 24% off with code Gaia. It's listed now, even though I'm blending it live and then they, the team will let this kind of set for 24 hours before they bottle it because they kind of want to let all the ingredients come together. But incense that's made in ceremony like this has a totally different energy to it than any other incense that, that you'll buy, um, mostly because these old ways are not practiced as much anymore. It's been part of my mission at Sage Goddess for all those years to remind us of these, these old ways and to keep them alive. So I'm going to teach you real quick, how do you know when it's done, right? By the way, that's all pure essential oil that we're blending in here. So, And the essential oils bring the additional properties of those oils, but they also serve as a binding agent so that your incense isn't super powdery. And the way you know it's done is when you, when you push into it with, with your hand, it holds the shape of your hand. Do you see that? It holds my absolute handprint. So I know when I see the indentation lines of my rings that I've got the consistency right. And then it's just going through and underneath it to loosen up the dry bits and to bring it all together. And the smell, I can tell you from where I'm standing, is really good. But I don't know that there's um, anything better, honestly, than the ingredients we've used. That sandalwood is beautiful. Dragon's blood's always good. Um, but then to bring in the lighter, more feminine lemon balm is sweet. That labdenum is very expensive, so that's one of the most important ingredients in the mix. It's, um, I can tell the patchouli is aged. So it has a very earthy scent to it that I love. So let me test my hand front one more time. If I can see my rings, I'm good. Perfect hand print. So from the north to the south and the west to the east. May all who work with this blend be blessed by it and carry those blessings in all they do and all they create. Together we say, Amen. Uh -huh. And so it is. Um, I don't know what the container looks like. Is, is there a picture of it? I don't know. You have to look at sagegoddess.com and take a look at it. It's right on the front page. They just listed it this afternoon because me making it was part you know, of the ceremony. You know, so. This could be in like an orange or a red jar. I, think that was I like it. Specific, but, yeah. I'm going to put in a little more oil just because I love you and because I have more. Oops, some fell on my hand. Oh, <laughs> I always say, oops, it fell on my clothes. Oops, it fell on the carpet. <laughs> I want to spill a whole bottle. Like a six ounce bottle of essential oils that I've been blending for a long time. 
um, onto the rug in my living room, and I swear to God, like, it's great, because that room has smelled like that perfume for four years now. <laughs> it's one of my favorite blends I've ever made. Um, I didn't bring it to Sage Goddess, because I only had the one bottle, but I was like, fuck, and then I was like, this is awesome. Happy accidents, right? Okay. That's even better for you now. And you can see how packed it is. So when you just have a straight powder blend, you're not gonna get that texture. It's the, the way I'm able to pack it is because of the oil content. And look at my hands. That's how you know you made something good, y'all. Christiana's like, I would climb in that bowl. So the way you burn loose incense is, do you have a charcoal disc? I don't know, is that, that one new, there is new, I think, in that. Yeah. yeah, it's a great question. So let me just show you how you do this. Um, could you add mako? Yeah. So the team will add what's called mako powder, M-A-K-K-O, which is an incendiary agent, so you don't have to do this. But in the old days, those of us in the temples would light our charcoal. Nowadays, we have quick lights. You don't have to stand there. In the old days, it would take us probably 10 minutes to get a full fire burning ring to be able to burn incense. Also, sometimes these charcoal discs are little jerks, and they don't, they don't do what they're supposed to do. Um, you got to talk to her and loosen her up a little bit. I always say some of them need more foreplay than others. I think um, this one looks like she, I got her going. Okay, so she'll start to kind of spit and hiss. And then what you do is you just take a pinch of this. And just a little bit on top. You. That smells real good. I'm glad you asked about it because that's kind of a taste test and that tells me it's a good incense. I can smell all that patchouli and that copal and all that um, dragon's blood. It's very forward in this blend. I think you're going to like it a lot. All right. So. Today was a good day at work. What did you do? I blended incense with all my friends. Um and hotboxed my team. <laughs> so I'm not responsible for what happens to everybody when they leave the room tonight. Um, so anyway, thank you for joining us for this Beltane altar decoration party incense creation. This is at sagegoddess.com. Your code is Gaia for 24% off. If you say spinel in your notes, this is only for you guys. You're entering to win a perfect raspberry spinel crystal from my collection for manifestation. So good luck. Um, and stay tuned. We have live Beltane ritual coming up on um, May 1st, so that's why we're preparing all of this in advance. If you are in Apothecary, which is in my online class in Herbal Healing, we have class tomorrow. Looking forward to our journey. Tomorrow, session two. Um, something really powerful we're doing together tomorrow. I'm taking you to the battlegrounds of your life to help you understand the nature of conflict. So I will see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. for Apothecary. If you'd like more information on how to learn with me, sagegoddess.com slash apothecary. In the meantime, get ready for my favorite holiday. It's coming. We'll see you guys soon. Have a great night. Thank you, Karen, for being there. No, you don't have to use charcoal. We're going to put mako in it. I'm just showing you how to burn it without mako. We will add mako for you so you don't have to use charcoal. Luis is like, no, I am really done. <laughs> Good night, you guys.